This is the view from my home in northwest Devon, which is five miles from the Cornish border. It's a view I try very hard not to look at, because if I do look at it, I go on and on and on looking instead of working. Hello, I'm Amanda Craig, uh, the author of uh, nine novels, the ninth of which is The Golden Rule. It's about Hannah, a uh, Cornish girl who has left a town called St Piran's, which some of you may recognise. Um, she wanted to get away, she wanted to um, leave the poverty of coastal Cornwall and she goes to Durham to university where she meet, meets um, the literally rather entitled Jake. And when the novel opens, she is on the London to Penzance train to see her dying mother. And there she meets a woman in the first class carriage who invites her in, who's also very unhappily married and very angry. And between them, the two women decide to murder each other's husbands. If this plot sounds at all familiar, it is, of course, Strangers on a Train. But um, when Hannah gets to Ginny's husband's uh, house in Cornwall, she discovers someone who is very different from the man who's been described to her. You can read this novel just as a thriller um, set in Cornwall, but underneath it is uh, quite a, a, a literary structure because Hannah is, um, in a sense, almost corrupted by the literature that she reads, particularly Jane Austen. She, um, she and her daughter are both led into con you know, acts and actions and consequences through what they have read. It's, it's something you can read at many levels. And it's also funny. So um, I've always been interested in this uh, great tension uh, which has been deepening in my lifetime between the haves and the have-nots. Um, you know, it seems to me to be the great conflict of perhaps any time, but particularly our time, which, um, you know, my childhood began in a much more equal society in the 60s and 70s. And I've seen the gulf between uh, rich and poor and indeed between city and country deepen. I'm very interested in what, um, not, not in politics as such, but what, how politics affects real people, how it makes people tick. And um, I think it's a very fascinating subject alongside money, which is the other thing that I, is deeply unfashionable to write about now, but which I passionately believe um, people should discuss because it's this culture of not discussing money, unlike, of course, Jane Austen and Trollope, that I think has also led to this great gulf um, it's also very good, rich material for, for comedy. And I am ultimately, um, you know, a, a comic writer, I suppose. <laughs> we were actually down here already when lockdown happened. Um, so we've again had this very strange disconnect of living in this unutterably beautiful landscape in you know peace and quiet and everything while being dreadfully worried about everybody we'd left behind in London including my 92 year old mother um, so this has been a very strange time very interesting time I um, don't expect I will be writing a lockdown novel directly in future but it's clearly going to affect the next book that I've started writing now. It's, um, apart from having been a great devotee as a child of um, things like Green Smoke, which is about a little girl on holiday there, it is something that is um, 
well, among other things, it's it, it's the place where I began to recover from cancer um, because I was too ill um, to go abroad for a couple of years. And so um, we discovered bucket and spade holidays and um, wondered that we'd ever gone abroad. I know that Cornish people are living in dread of a great influx um, this summer while everybody's so worried about the virus. But um, it is absolute paradise, um, particularly if you've got a young family. And um, there's wonderful sandy beaches and the clean, beautiful sea and um, you know all those other things like cream teas, but also inland Cornwall I love very much, the woods and the streams and the rivers and the kind of ruggedness. To me, it is um, really, as you yourself have said, Patrick, a kind of country that is uh, almost separate from Britain. It certainly feels separate when you cross the Tamar. You know, I, I, I wish it were nothing but well, um, even if I am, as, a, as I've possibly said before, an ardent Remainer, I'm terribly worried about what Brexit is going to do to the poorest and most remote parts. I do see why Cornwall um, took a vote that has changed our national destiny. And um, I share the Cornish people's anger at what's been done to, um, in particular, the fishing industry. But um, I hate the way, as, as Hannah hates it, that a lot of um, city people while invading Cornwall as tourists, look down their noses at Cornish people. Ah, all this technology. I've got my mobile tapes to a lamp. This, okay, this is an extract from close to the beginning where Hannah meets um, the very rich Ginny on the train. She, she had forgotten to refill her plastic bottle and without the money to buy water, licked her parched lips. A man trod heavily on her foot, for which she apologised. The thought of standing like this for hour after hour, the stench of the toilets, sour breath and unwashed bodies, brought a new level of misery. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. The train repeated, I wish you were dead. The sliding glass door between carriages sprang open whenever anyone triggered the sensor. On the other side was first class. There, every seat was as wide as an elephant and its air conditioning worked perfectly. Just one person sat inside, a woman wearing a sleeveless green linen dress that framed her slim form as the dark hair framed her pale face. A gauzy scarf was draped across her shoulders, rippling with every shade from emerald to malachite. From each ear hung a single large pear-shaped pearl, and on one arm was a heavy platinum cuff, whose rich gleam circled her wrist like a weapon. Before her were several small bottles of mineral water and an Apple iPad inside a green leather case. The door snapped shut again, but Hannah went on gazing. Someone so elegant seemed to belong to a different species, not just a different class. What would it be like to have her life? All at once, the woman in first looked up. Their eyes met, and after a moment, the woman smiled and beckoned. Even then, she might not have dared to step through, but the train gave a sudden jolt and she fell against the door. It opened. Chill air washed around her. The relief was so delicious that she wanted to stand there, her flesh turning from liquid to solid. Hello, the woman said. Her voice was soft and kind. Do I know you? Hannah asked. No but I thought I'd invite you in. 
Hannah sighed. I don't have a first class ticket. That doesn't matter. If I'm found here by a ticket inspector at will, I've got a spare. My companion couldn't come. One rectangle of orange and cream card appeared between long white fingers like a conjuring trick. The woman said, take it. I'm going as far as fall. You, St. Piran. Hannah looked around the empty carriage. I'll, I'll sit somewhere else. The woman shrugged. Be my guest. Water, it's free in first. Oh, yes, yes, please. She drank a whole bottle, gasping. I'm Ginny. Hannah, pleased to meet you. Holiday? No. She twisted her wedding ring on her finger, conscious of her uneven nails. Ginny held up her own manicured hand. There was a plain platinum bond, band also loose. Is your husband a shit? A concentration of venom changed Ginny's face like a convulsion. I'm travelling down to collect some stuff. You? Those in the grip of misery and fury long to unburden themselves. This is the secret of every organisation from the church to social media. Hannah knew, however, that the woes of others are entertainment, especially where a marriage is concerned. In the past three years, she'd learnt that, however sympathetic people seem, all the questions concerning a marital breakdown are about how you must be the author of your own misfortunes, especially if you were a woman. Even if she were to tell her mother's family, she knew the response would be the same. But surely you must have realised, suspected, understood, was how conversations with former friends all went. It was like having the nail that covers the soft, exquisitely tender part of the finger again and again, until the nail itself will never grow back properly. But someone else who is going through the same torment is another matter. Me too, she said. That's just a little beginning of um, how this horrible plot is hatched between the women. I will see you at the North Cornwall Book Festival.